Hey guys, Matthew with Parkway Business Solutions bringing you a video today about QuickBooks Online Inventory and the new bundles. We've had quite a few different clients that really had a hard time switching from desktop to online specifically because they utilized estimates all the time and really wanted to be able to have the ability for a markup. And it came to me that with bundles, you could accomplish that pretty easily. What we have is in this estimate, there's actually two different bundles. One of them has the information that's going to be hidden. The other one does not. As you can see, the top one here does have the hidden information. So what we've done is we basically created a bundle that's going to have the different parts we would need inside of it. And then we created an extra item or service item that is for markup. Some people want the markup to be seen, so you can do that if you wish, or you can have it collapse and only show whatever you want as the top level item. The key to how this is done, how you put the information in to either the quantity and the rate, depending on whether you check off this box or not, will determine if the items below will be seen as well. So if you do click it, you will display each of the individual items that are inside of here. Switching back to the estimate to review the setup that we've done, you'll see again that we have the two different bundles on the, the same invoice, the top one having the hidden feature where the bottom one does not, and really that's the only difference between the two. Uh, the key things that I want to show you have to do with the markup line itself on both of these and the different ways that you can choose to put the information in. These lines here are the different parts that are included into my bundle. And by adding those up together, I get my $350. Since I want to do a 20% markup of that, that 350 is the key number. Uh, you can either put the 350 into the quantity location and then have it multiplied by the 0 0.20 rate or vice versa. If I know that the 20% markup is the constant, then I'm going to put the 0.20 into the rate area because then I can just change the quantity to be equal to whatever the number value of this is. So if on this specific job, I decided to charge the client $100, I could very easily just change this 350 to a 400 and my markup amount would be exactly the same. On the the opposite side of that, of course, is if I know that these items are not going to change, but I may need to change my markup. Let's say we know for sure that we have an agreed ending price, then I would want to have my markup out in the quantity area to where I can change that as I would need and be able to keep the rate in this amount exactly the same. Diving into the bundles a little bit further, a lot of people have been asking questions as to what you can change, cannot change. Nice things about setting bundles up the way we have, you can easily just change the top bundle amount and it will automatically change everything below it equally for you. Um, let's put it back to one real quick. You can also come into these and modify as necessary the bottom ones and it adds everything up to give you the top amount. So in this situation, since we now would have 450, you would see that because my secondary number, again, you've got your percentage of the markup times what the total is, you would have to change this to 450 also, or you wouldn't get a true 20% markup. Once you do that, everything goes right back to place there. If you really needed to, you can even come over here and you could change the item. Maybe you want to do the 500. Now, the reason I show you that part is it's the idea that you could set up just a couple universal items out of your item list and then use those as your markup items and just be able to interchange them back and forth. I'm going to show you one more time. We'll do the print and preview of it. And you can see with the top one, which we were not playing with, that on this specific one, all the extra details are completely hidden. But the bottom one, because we've chosen to show them, they still are. So you have the ability to choose either way. I'm going to go in here. We will click Save and Close. 
So now we have the estimate and we'll take it and let's turn it into a purchase order to show you how that works. I should mention that with estimates and with the bundles, you have to be particular about the items that you're putting in and the level of detail that you put onto it to try to transfer information over from an estimate to a purchase order if you're trying to reduce your data entry. Uh, keep in mind, we're, when we're doing these type of transactions, we're talking about double-sided items. So you're going to have a purchase-facing description, and you're going to have a customer or sales-facing description. Going to the purchase order, of course, would be the purchase-facing one. If your bundle is made up of items that do not have that level of detail in them, they will not transfer over, as it will tell us in this little pop-up. So with the pop-up, it's pretty normal. It's telling you, hey, bundles are not going to transfer over. However, the individual parts will, as long as they have the purchase-facing side of it. So we'll say, okay. And it's going to pull up the two items that we had that actually were the purchase-facing pieces. So the markup didn't pull up, of course. The other portion that was on there was labor. So that didn't have a purchase-facing item, so it did not pull up. Um, we have the two different sizes, so you can see the two different rates. Everything transferred over just like it should. Now that we've turned that into a bill, let's go take a look at the financial reporting to see the effects. As we review, we can see that we were capturing the revenues appropriately and even the markup into the appropriate accounts, but we're not seeing that we're starting to capture the expenses at the exact same time. So your markup's being captured correctly, your expenses are being captured, as well as your incomes are being captured. And that's the best way to take advantage of bundles. Thanks for watching the video today. Now that we've shared with you what areas of QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online are you or your clients currently struggling with? Leave a comment below. Who knows? Maybe together we can find a way around it. If you've got additional questions or looking for some advice, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to us directly at info at parkwaymail.com. And as always, here's wishing you a very successful week.